Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Manu Bhatnagar here. I'm calling from, I'm speaking from Delhi. And uh, Lokesh ji has asked me to speak upon uh, the future of the past regarding hill stations. So you can see the topic on the screen. And uh, uh, I'll keep on uh, uh, speaking from my experience. And uh, then I'll await your comments and questions and try and respond to those. So uh, I have worked in uh, various parts of India. Uh, Lokesh ji asked me to focus on Uttarakhand and I have tried to do that, although I have brought in a few examples from Himachal also. Uh, mainly in Uttarakhand, my uh, area of work has been in uh, Nainital. And uh, uh, I'm quite familiar with that place and so from that I'll that being the portler I'll go on to the general from that now before I move on in the presentation I would like to present the larger picture as per my perception uh, I hope I'm audible and clear uh, now hill stations are actually a creation of the British uh, I don't think we had any, uh, you know, category known as hill stations before the British came to India. And even after they came, it was only, uh, you know, in the 19th century that, uh, you know, they began to move towards the hills when they found the heat of the plains unbearable and the upper regions presenting a climate which was uh, more conducive to them and which was also reminding them of uh, their mother country. Uh, before the British era, what did we have in the hills? So in the pre-British era, settlements were mainly related to pilgrimage or were the main towns of hill principalities. A few examples are like these, Nahan, you might have heard of in uh, Himachal or Mandi, that was another principality. Almora, which is in Uttarakhand, that is uh, the Chand Rajas, uh, Tehri, uh, that's another small principality, and the other, you know, towns which were related to pilgrimage only, that is Srinagar, Joshimat, Dev Prayag, and you know all the other Prayags. So nobody went to these places for pleasure or leisure. Okay, and uh, the architecture of these settlements that is the pre-British settlements, that had a distinctly Indian flavor. And uh, here you had uh, traditional temples, a couple of palaces, some you know, ruins of forts now left. Uh, the architectural style was mainly drawn from the plains with some adaptation to the climatic conditions and the material availability up in the hills. Uh, in fact, uh, most, most of the temples, they use the local stone masonry of, you know, very limited uh, wooden elements. And then uh, the ornamentation of the, those was uh, rooted in uh, religious imagery. Now, when these uh, locations were overtaken by the Britishers, they did not penetrate the hills too deeply. They chose locations which had a reasonably good altitude, so a very, uh, you know, lugubrious climate and uh, uh, not going very deep into the hills. So if you look at uh, 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 Uttarakhand only, you'll find that uh, Masuri isn't too far from Dehradun. Uh, Nainital isn't too far from uh, the railhead, that's uh, Kartgodam. And uh, you don't have hill stations beyond that. Or you had these cantonments, that is Rani Khet or Lansdowne. Um, if you look at uh, Himachal, you have uh, Kasoli uh, or Dakshai, that's on the way to Shimla. Both, both in fact, Kasoli and Dakshai are on the way to Shimla. So the Britishers did not set up these uh, uh, their settlements very deep in the hills. They were fairly close to the plains, but at altitudes where the climate was conducive. 
now these are the settlements which were founded by the british which have flourished they lavished their resources on these uh, they had uh, populated these places with institutions even a small place like kasoli has the central drug, drug research institute where you have the you know various vaccines uh, including the rabies vaccine made over there or uh, you look at uh, masuri nanital these places are full of institutions you recall that even nanital has got that observatory okay so uh, or uh, the survey of india <coughs> uh, offices uh, uh, in dehradun and then george everest's uh, uh, house and his estate in fact in masuri where he got a very clear view of the himalayas now while these settlements flourished the native settlements languished and certainly did not prosper now you can take the example of almora or tehri or chamba or in himachal mandi nurpur now chamba is very close to dalhousie but uh, what is a hill station in the moment i say hill station your mind uh, recalls dalhousie not chamba okay whereas chamba was uh, the capital of chamba state so you can see a clear distinction that uh, the british settlements flourished whereas the native settlements uh, they languished and therefore somehow these places never became hill stations right now the hill stations of the britishers they were not uh, bogged down or hampered by traditional indian architecture uh while making new delhi latins grew upon indian traditions but in the hill stations the british were not uh, in any way hamstrung or uh, you know weighed down by any perceived need to replicate the local architecture and so they drew upon the building traditions of scotland and uh, they created the sense of a european character okay now what is happening is in the spatial layout of hill stations what did you have you had malls where you took the evening walks uh, you had a cantonment you had uh, schools and other institutions and then there were places where the natives who would serve them they could be located right if you recall and i'm sure many of you do that in uh, nanital the upper mall was re reserved for europeans whereas the indians were supposed to walk only on the lower mall okay so that is how deep the segregation went and the architecture of the hill these hill stations and we are now heir to those traditions and i would say that uh, we cannot consider those uh, european building traditions in the hills as a foreign element they are now here for the last uh, you know at least 150 years and more and uh, uh, they are in a way very you know well adapted to the climatic condition uh, what are the elements in these you find that you have uh, either you know uh, coast stone masonry or you have uh, you know plastered surfaces but generally you find that uh, most of the surfaces are well protected from rain by deep verandas all the roofs the gable roofs the simply sloping roofs and uh, you recall that they came up with various patterns uh, like uh, alhabad pattern roof or nanital pattern roof Uh, so these are the standard features in the hills and uh, one of my observations is that there were only two colors for the roofs and uh, these if you recall they are either forest green or terracotta red and now in our modern uh, approach or we i have seen uh, you know purple roofs also but uh, they are all very jarring so the british from their scottish experience and uh, over time they chose only these two colors for the roofs occasionally you would also have slate roofs right but that would depend uh, where you are located so if you are in uh, somewhere near almora uh, you might even get stone patals 
and uh, make a roof of that. But otherwise, generally in the earlier times, it was the plain GI sheets, okay, used in various patterns. And you had dormer windows, bay windows. These were the standard features. The floors could very often be raised so that, uh, you know, the wooden floors would have aeration below them so that, uh, you know, they would not catch the immense damp in the hills. And uh, yes, fireplaces uh, were uh, uh, very, you know, uh, uh, normal feature and that would uh, break the roof line in a uh, good way. Now, also the British came up with the engineered <coughs> retaining walls and these retaining walls could be quite mammoth. I recall uh, the Obroy Hotel in uh, the Obroy Cecil in uh, Shimla and uh, you know it's uh, uh, very impressive to see the uh, uh, very high brick masonry retaining walls and these are very well engineered and very well calculated structurally to hold and they have held for you know more than a century or more uh, the Cecil walls uh, I think they are about uh, 100 feet high so uh, uh, these are some of the innovations the British came up with before that I do not recall that uh, there were very many retaining walls or you know such huge ones in any case now <coughs> post independence the British left and uh, the Indian elite took their place and they kept up the tradition of going to the hill stations in summers and uh, subsequently the you know the uh, promotion of tourism and the you know easy access to transport with Marutis available at, um, with every family travel has become very easy and therefore access to hill stations has become very easy so you know the problems which are taking place that these small towns nanita's local population is only 50000 they get overwhelmed in uh, summers earlier on because of uh, the population and now not only because of the population but also because of the vehicular population uh, we are not being able to manage these places uh, now the uh, state government in its wisdom it is very hungry for revenues and so too is the entire tourism industry and uh, this is uh, you know uh, uh, the driving force behind uh, promoting uh, tourism and in fact converting even what was pilgrimage into if you look at the consultants uh, reports it is just hold on please uh, yes Gansha. Uh. Then it stuck me my bar how got the beat over again I'll be to my bowl round yeah yeah I'll be to large picture jewelry and I'll move on don't don't worry yeah it's all fine so uh, I think uh, maybe people are a little bored of the large picture I'll just move it by one slide okay so I'll come to this uh, but uh, let me just complete what I'm saying uh, so uh, uh, the uh, you know uh, the hill stations have got overwhelmed and uh, now when that is happening and people are minting money out of hill stations then the heritage is uh, you know it seems to be uh, coming in the way uh, you have large properties with uh, uh, old buildings and people look at the real estate value whereas the traditional values are not respected any urban place is like a joint family now what is a joint family it has uh, you know two or three or four layers of generations all living peacefully and uh, benefiting from each other you know they you learn from your elders and you respect them they teach you about traditions and you learn about the wisdom of traditions similarly a town has several you know layers of buildings and it's not that as you become more modern you you know you throw out the 
elders you have to retain them all of, all of them have to live together there was a book i recall good and bad manners in architecture by tristan edwards and uh, it showed uh, you know how uh, new buildings should fit in into an old mosaic so you know the old bring stability a sense of traditional values a sense of history and all that goes together to create the physical character of a place and endow it with values right you look at old dehradun and you look at new dehradun now new dehradun could be anywhere right but uh, let's say the uh, fri or uh, the you know ima and so many other institutions the you know uh, um, survey of india they you know if you were to take those buildings out and place them somewhere else they would be completely out of place but they are completely at home in their present surrounding and those are the buildings which really endow the place with its character you uh, take them out then what are you left with a medley of boxes okay and that is happening to all the hill stations now uh let me just go on uh, uh, a little more uh so the development juggernaut is overwhelming the tastes of the novo rich the need of the contractors the greed of the suppliers the insensitivity of administrators and politicians are effectively stifling the graceful old architecture and replacing it with gaudy characterless styleless modernity which reflects the westernized aspirations of property owners so uh, as a very recent example i uh, in fact have been pushing uh, lokesh ji to take up the case of the dehradun railway station now perhaps you would be aware that uh, dehradun railway station has been chosen for modernization on a uh ppp basis public private partnership and uh, uh, the the photographs which were put out of the conceptual models it uh, immediately reminded me of the modernized facade of uh, new delhi railway station and uh, you know that sense of being at ease uh in a place i thought would completely disappear the uh, some of the land of the railways would be taken to put up uh, you know multi storied commercial buildings now who wants these and uh, what would happen to the traffic in that area have any traffic studies been carried out but primarily what would happen to the railway station such a pleasant place spending time in those old uh, you know restaurants waiting halls even they have been modernized to some extent but when i look at the old uh cast iron trusses you know it, it sort of gives me a sense of peace of being easily you know fitting into the scene rather than everything being so impersonal modernized maybe it may be more efficient but do we really need that would there do not lose its character okay so these are the kinds of things which are happening uh, a line comes to mind you might have heard of the poet w h davies and w h davies had written that uh, famous poem what is this life so full of care there is no time to stand and stare no time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep or cows a poor life this if full of care we have no time to stand and stare so you know uh, we are increasing the speed of life and uh, the pace of life is going you know more rapid and uh, ultimately i think we are not able to connect with our own roots pilgrimage too has become religious tourism you want to go to kedarnath from mumbai uh take a flight to dehradun in the morning uh then take the helicopter to uh kedarnath uh you pay money and you will uh, you know jump the queue by noon you have performed your tapasya and uh, then you take the chopper back to dehradun by evening you are relating your story in the uh, bombay clubs okay over a glass of drinks what is that pilgrimage so uh, you know the higher the speed with which you travel the less the spiritual content 
and with every stroke the spiritual density of the himalayas is being chipped away so although i was asked to speak on hill stations but i think there is a wider aspect of the past which is getting diluted the sacred aura of ancient stones is being concealed under bathroom tiles you see temples which uh, you know those ancient stones each of them has an aura but in our uh, uh, frenzy to become modern uh, you find the temples getting whitewashed uh, some uh, you know devotee gives the money and you cover certain parts with the you know glazed bathroom tiles and immediately you find that the sacred sense of that temple begins to depart so uh, this i think is to my mind the larger picture and now i'll uh, move on with the presentation the, this is uh, the 1978 uh, map of uh, uh, nanital and you can still see the names bau cottage uh, edwin stove uh, you see uh, sherwood college you know all you have all those old english names about you have cozy villa somewhere here and uh, you have pilgrims uh, cottage somewhere up here so the the britishers made these hill stations and at the same time they gave them names which reminded them of their original home uh this is the kedarnath temple i think this is an 1880s image uh, i may be corrected but uh, there's a certainly an old image and you can see how the temp temple stands uh, untrammeled by modernity whereas here is gangotri temple this is a photograph uh, in lokesh ji's report and you can see how you know by painting it all in those stones white it looks as if it was made yesterday okay so you know uh, how do we treat our heritage the restoration the maintenance that needs to be very authentic uh, these are the indian styles of architecture use of a lot of wood now perhaps not so much possible uh the koti banal kind of buildings uh you know carved uh, woodwork probably you wouldn't be able to get such sections now this is from himachal uh, uh, the slate look at the lovely pattern obtained so simply okay uh this is that pattern and it's all rough hewn okay uh this is again near uh, uh, you know uh, 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 near kangra and uh, the, uh, this uh, place paragpur paragpur is uh, it's the you know traditional place of the sooths the sooths were merchants and uh, with the monies they made they came back here and they would build uh, some very lovely houses so you see the very elegant design of these fireplace chimneys and these are some of the houses of the sooths uh, you can see uh, you know but uh, it's not that uh, they were weren't uh, uh, traditional uh, indian styles available now this is the uh, 1850 lithograph of uh, nanital lake uh, this is uh, probably uh, chana peak this is the area where the flats are this is where the mall is now and as you can see it's only after the dart was built over here that the lake assumed the proportions which it has now earlier on on it wasn't as large as it is at present but the same catchment look at these hills virgin green forest and this is what we have made it okay but does this remind you of any kind of heritage not at all <coughs> yeah uh, this is a portlar uh, image i want to show <coughs> i'm sure you can see the frame uh, it's uh, all pretty natural the uh, imposing a uh, snow line but look at this somebody has thought it fit that 
an overhead water tank can be placed in that area. Whereas the larger picture should be in the hills especially. That what is going to happen in a particular visual frame from various angles. So that is very important. Yeah, now I come to one of the works which we carried out <clears throat> from 2004 to 2007. Uh, Mr. Amrendra Sinha, uh, the uh, secretary of the IT department of uh, government of Uttarakhand, I think uh, a very fine officer who was far sighted and had the sensitivity. Uh, he asked us to undertake the restoration of the Hermitage building, Nanital so that it could be adapted for reuse as a center for IT academies. Okay, so this work was interested to us. And uh, this is the location. This is the 1893 map of Nanital. Uh, here you can see many more names. I don't know where you can see them. This one says Ivy Parley. This is Waverly Cottage. This is Balmoral, a typical Scottish name. Uh, and so on. Okay. Uh, yeah, I won't go into more of them, but uh, so it is. Now, this is uh, the these are the flats, and uh, this is uh, where the Hermitage is. Right now, the Hermitage was probably built by some Englishman, and then subsequently it uh, came to. Uh, Rais of UP. Rais meaning you know wealthy notable and uh, so they did it up in their own style. Now this was con uh, it says originally constructed in 1880 by John Stevenson in 1919 acquired by the Nawab of Bulan Shahar and then acquired by Kumau University in 2004. So there are four acres uh, area um, uh, in which I was told, and there were caves also uh, in these uh, rocks over there, which I was told used to uh, be the habitat of uh, leopards. So now the, we tried our best to get uh, the drawings of the uh, of the old buildings. But this is all that was available with the municipality, which didn't take us very far. So there was this was the main building, the outhouses, small outhouses, and uh, this was the overall area. Now, uh, this was another old drawing available, but these did not really help us. Again, see, uh, going back to this, uh, see the name over here, Craig Cottage, Langsdale. And these are all, uh, you know, Scottish names, Sleepy Hollow. Now, finally, we uh, had to measure the buildings ourselves. And uh, first thing was to draw up the plans. And so we measured the entire uh, place and uh, we came up with these uh, plans. Um, all these detailed drawings were measured and uh, they had to be drafted from the uh, existing buildings. Now. Uh, the, this is the outhouse. You come in from here, an outhouse. There's a porch here, and these are various rooms. And then there's a large hall known as Rang Mahal with a veranda behind it. These are the outhouses, uh, which were, uh, you know, uh, earlier stables and servants over here. So this was the condition of the outhouse, right? Now, uh, this was the exterior of the main building. All these walls, uh, this was not even lime mortar. It's, these are stone, uh, uh, rough stones with the mud mortar, and then finished with uh, a plaster. Okay. Uh, this is the porch. Now the porch uh, was coming down on this side. This pillar had held, whereas this one had uh, sort of uh, keeled uh, to a side somewhat. You can see the condition, the uh, eaves, they were, you know, gone. These are all wooden eaves. And so, you know, here you can see the condition. The leaning porch. And this was the inside condition. So it was really in rather bad shape. These were, you know, old tiles, uh, flooring. 
and this uh, you know all the internal walls they had wallpaper but as you can see the wallpaper was all torn up and uh, in some places you could see the pattern but mostly not as you can see over here you can see the pattern but then you know down below it's all torn this was the rang mahal it had uh, this uh, golden uh, wallpaper these wallpapers around at, uh, in 2004 they were, they were about 70 years old and uh, you know all this rang mahal had got uh, golden paint on the roofs and so on so it was fairly ornate uh, this is the entrance uh, inside the porch and here again you see the leaning uh, porch and, and through the porch you can see the outhouse so you know what we did was we started uh, repairing things and uh, mr sina also got the it companies like microsoft to you know start uh, you know looking up the place and uh, coming in to see which places they could use as classrooms so what we did was we you know used a truck jack you know the one used to lift up the body of the truck in order to change the wheels and uh, put a you know a large pole on that and lifted up this uh, upper this room above the porch having done that then we repaired the leaning uh, uh, pillar and thereafter lowered the uh, uh, the room back onto the pillars so these rough and ready methods uh, had to be devised uh, then gradually all the eaves were repaired all the glasses changed to new the steel sheeting which was completely gone was replaced with the wooden paneling as you can see over here and uh, now see this is the uh, uh, if you face the building this is the left side and subsequently Microsoft ran their classes over here now from this we this is the same thing so removing the roof in order to repair everything and then coming you can see the exposed roof then when you expose the roof you find all these wooden elements also gone and so here's the work going on to uh, change uh, and repair this side and finally as you can see this is how the transition was made okay and uh, you have the same building capable of being used for another 100 years okay now the same surface now this is the rear of the rang mahal you can see again in a very bad shape but after restoration this is how it became and uh, this is uh, you know further to the rear again you see the condition and subsequently uh, you know it uh, improved like this this is on the right side of the building and this began to change like this okay so uh, you were one was able to inject a lot of life into the old building at a much lower cost than one would have had to you know uh, make a new building so this uh, side became like this and uh, you know all these gradually you saw this uh, corridor over here and uh, in the next one you see the same corridor in a much better condition and this outhouse a small you know very small uh, building so to say and here you can see how the outhouse also uh, was uh, upgraded now these are the uh, servant quarters and the stables and this was to become a kind of a hostel for students now here we took certain liberties and uh, made internal changes and external changes too and subsequently uh, this was the shape it came to okay so uh, now the interiors uh, now this was where microsoft would be and uh, their classroom and uh, so here you know every uh, thing was uh, the internal ceilings were redone and uh, these are you know all golden uh, color paints which were hand painted back the rang mahal or uh, the wallpaper was uh, changed and uh, here here is you can see from here how different the roof 
uh, restored in the same manner. All this were golden paint, hand painted, and uh, various wallpapers. Now here you can see this particular wallpaper, partly torn, but here a new paper has been put on it, and this has all been hand repainted. Okay, this is a very laborious work, and uh, five local painters, uh, you know, artist students were engaged on this. Similarly, this one. Uh, this is how the Microsoft room became finally. Here are the uh, floor tiles being cleaned with special chemicals. And the gardens, which were completely run down, they were restored in this manner. So this was, uh, uh, you know, this was completed in 2007. But by that time, Mr. Sinha was gone. And the uh, building was handed over to Kumau University. Now, I'm sure you'd agree that a very positive effort had been made. But uh, I was very pained when I went back a few years later that, uh, you know, the, uh, the clerical officials and the bureaucracy, they had partitioned the interiors. They had not, uh, you know, wires were running all over the place. And, uh, you know, it was uh, very uh, painful to see that our work had, uh, you know, really gone, gone to waste, I would say. <clears throat> Here's another uh, example. This is from Masuri. Uh, Tullamore House. And again, Tullamore is a Scottish name. This was owned by a private individual. Uh, it's a building which uh, uh, overlooks the uh, northern valley north of uh, Masuri, and you can see the uh, uh, Kasmanda house from here, and you can see the uh, administrative academy uh, from here. Now, this uh, what had happened was, as you know, that in uh, Masuri, as per Supreme Court orders, uh, no new construction could be taken up. Now, this work was again done from around 2006 onwards. And uh, here, uh, this building was in complete ruins. And uh, only 16 properties, an exception, had been made of by the Supreme Court. But here also, you could uh, change the interiors, but the external footprint could not be changed. So. Now, from this uh, uh, situation, gradually it was rebuilt on the, you know, external uh, profile being retained exactly in the same manner. And this is ultimately how it is at the moment. So we kept the heights, we kept the profile, the windows were certainly changed. So I won't say this is exact uh, restoration work. But this is certainly in Great. keeping Great. keeping with the uh, uh, the colonial style, which is the trademark of uh, uh, the uh, uh, hill stations. So as I said, we are heirs to that tradition, and these buildings fit in with that climate. And generally, I would say I would praise the British that uh, they chose sites well, and the views and the sun they were always. Uh, major consideration. So building on southern slopes as far as possible, but if not possible, even so, uh, the view was always uh, a very, uh, you know, important consideration. I've already shown you this image, and I've also shown you what has happened. Now, uh, in 2014-15, uh, uh, the, uh, the government of Uttarakhand, they again contacted us and uh, asked us to uh, prepare conservation plans for various, uh, uh, you know, old structures, uh, and which we did. Okay. And this was an ADB-assisted project. Unfortunately, it ran into problems with the contractors and uh, for you know it uh, did not get completed in the manner which we had envisaged but i would run over this uh, see this is the situation of the bandstand uh, before the start of the project 
at that time the uh, uh, the commissioner mr as nayal he showed us a old image of the bandstand and they showed uh, you know these pillars and wood and a sloping roof on top okay and he said get it back to this okay so acha and uh, in the meantime the you know uh, the building the seems the supporting walls had toppled over as you can see a new this was almost entirely new that a floor had been made with rcc beams below and you know some very crude supporting work so now after we uh, completed the work this is how it became we used the same you can see the same railings as before but we clad all these uh, columns in uh, wood and we recreated the sloping roof and uh, in fact we went on to uh, you know repair all the uh, old style uh, masonry uh, railings along the edge of the lake so now this is again i found that uh, while you know uh, we left it in this condition but i'm sorry to say that i find that posters are stuck on these the polishing is not done as as it should be but well a foundation has been laid and it shows what could be done but would you like to have uh, this or would you like to have this will this remind you of a hill station or will this so uh, i don't think uh, uh, i need to labor that point now here's the library it's uh, uh, in, in the middle of the mall and on the edge of the lake and it's a uh, you know it's a uh, landmark over there in the sense that uh, a lot of people come and visit it and uh, we uh, saw that it's uh, very centrally located and this could become a you know a place with multiple uses a kind of a uh, you know a, a social meeting place a place for intellectual activity and in that uh, 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 orientation uh, we have uh, sort of uh, redesigned this place in the sense uh, well of course a lot of uh, structural work had to be done to stabilize the building which was leaning towards the lake because also of the pressure of the uh, you know entire airpata hill coming down on the mall and in fact uh, just two years back the road adjacent collapsed into the lake now as you can see the structure was extremely crude because this was uh, uh, toppling towards the lake you know these uh, ad hoc measures like uh, buttresses had been put in and uh, what we did was that we made a new retaining wall all the way from here around and then on the other side of the building which added uh, two triangular areas of about 4 500 square feet on either side of the building to be used as open air spaces i believe uh, those are being completed at the moment and all these uh, you know uh, uh, asbestos sheeting things uh, cladings there as you can see everything is you know gone I, for so many years nobody has bothered to spend a penny on its maintenance this is the you know supporting retaining wall it's all collapsing towards the lake and uh, this is the, you know the basement below the wooden floor of the library where uh, which is uh, which houses a number of ducks which uh, you know stay over here and come out into the lake and go back there every day as you can see the uh, supporting columns they are cracked the even the stabilizing work done by the pwd that is also giving way now here is the retaining wall being made around the building first here you can see the additional spaces which have been taken around the building and this is on the other side too uh now this uh, we created this as a 6 feet wide surface on top so that in due course we can take that uh, walkway all the way up to kennedy avenue and you can come out even up to the mall the idea was that people can walk on another pathway along the lake and that would bring them in closer connection with the lake and this would also continue towards the uh, the uh, you know the uh, uh, the boat house club so that you could entirely walk the edge of the lake without having to uh, uh, face the traffic 
Now this is on the mall side of the uh, uh, library. Here again, you can see it's in a decrepit state. And uh, you know, I really dislike these uh, advertisements being hung here and there just for a few coppers of revenue. They really spoil the uh, buildings. Now here you are, you can see this is the new retaining wall and uh, a small you know, walkway for the ducts to go down. Uh, the entire external surface uh, made with wood uh, instead of those asbestos sheets. Uh, new um, you know, GI sheet roofing on uh, uh, top. And this is from the opposite side from the uh, uh, from actually that is the you know the from the sharewood side this is how it uh, looked now uh, we just took some liberty that uh, you know these were the windows which were over here but we opened out two panels and made very large panels because the view which they framed was very elegant so this is the you know uh, mall side uh, which is uh, which uh, was being done and this is how the externals were beginning to look and here is the you know interiors being repaired um, the entire you know uh, ceiling uh, being redone new brackets being added to support the sagging uh, uh, supports now these are those very large windows which were created so you can you know look right across the lake and uh, the hill on the other side and this was the uh, you know schematic uh, interior design of how the library would look so this is these are those large windows these are the existing smaller windows <clears throat> so here you would have a you know a, a conference table presentations possible and uh, you know so this is how but again since we are not on the scene i find that uh, uh, the you know the ornamental work uh, is not being done these uh, hanging uh, old style lamps have been uh, have not been executed instead you know flush modern type of lights have been you know pushed into the false ceiling so uh, you know i find that uh, unfortunately our engineers and the government the pwd approach uh, how to simplify things please certain suppliers instead of you know uh, insisting on the highest aesthetic standards so that's a disappointment that instead of achieving 100 percent we'll probably achieve only 75 percent the other side of the library and uh, then uh, you know the dam wall itself through which the water flows out into balia nala now this was again another uh, you know very dicey situation uh, Let's see some of the, uh, now the idea was that uh, from the library, you would be able to come on the Kennedy Avenue. And then by extending the dart a little, you could go all the way across and we would have a pathway uh, along the road. So you could, uh, you know, uh, be with the lake instead of being on the road and watching out for traffic. Uh, again, this was, uh, you know, not uh, really, uh, you know, fully implemented for the reason that uh, we had a lot of activists who felt that, uh, you know, this amounted to an encroachment of the lake. But do recall that uh, when I showed you the 1850 lithograph, it's only because of the construction of the dart that the lake is as big as it is. Otherwise, it would not be naturally as large as it is. And by doing all this, taking one acre out of a 120 uh, acre lake and uh, creating a lot of uh, uh, interest and uh, you know improvements i thought it was justified but uh, anyway let's hope that uh, at some point of time people might see things the way we do so this uh, is the situation now for example these people can't come here but why could this not be connected in this fashion uh, there's opposition to those things now, when we, you know, uh, in this image, you can see that the water level is quite high, but uh, in summers, as you know, a lot of the lake bed gets exposed. Uh, now, here, uh, when we dug up the old foundations, we found that, uh, you know, for such a massive way, you had hardly any foundation. 
for this pillar this is no no foundation it would simply you know puncture the bed of the lake this was the condition of the uh, beams which were supporting the slab on which people were you know uh, standing above this and as you can see the entire reinforcement is turning to powder ferrous oxide okay the slabs also completely gone now we jacketed all the existing columns with the uh, proper foundations and uh, you know uh, uh, strong steel reinforcement and so as you can see and here you know these are made in a diamond shape in plan so that uh, you know they when the water comes in flowing from the lake the you know these are the kind of uh, structures you require to uh, present least resistance to the water and uh, the existing beams which you saw with their reinforcement gone all being jacketed with the uh, u-shaped beams and this is how uh, it began to look okay it would have been great if people could walk all the way along here but that was not to be even these uh, lights which are to be placed below the slabs in order to uh, you know light up these uh, uh, cavities uh, have still not been done now let's look at the uh, flats and here you can see the old municipality building and the uh, you know dsa the uh, district sports association stadium now this is not a very old building 1959 uh, is the date on it uh, now these are the buildings which actually frame the uh, flats and here is the old ashoka uh, uh, cinema hall this was another remarkable opportunity but for whatever reason uh, this has now of course gone into a court case but uh, this building has been dismantled uh, you know you had the old style seating in this you had the old projectors you had uh, uh, you know the uh, cur uh, curtains on the screens the way you had in the old cinema halls so this was another really worthwhile um, uh, heritage building, but uh, we don't seem to have much respect for heritage. But uh, what we want to do is to build muck like this. Now, the idea was to, uh, you know, restore the uh, DSA building in a particular style and, uh, you know, raise the roof so that, uh, as you can see through this transparency, that a lot of the you know uh, decrepit architecture uh, would not uh, would be screened off however this is as you can see the date is 2005 this did not happen at that time now subsequently in 2015 when we were asked to redo this so this was the uh, shape of the building and uh, we don't want these kind of advertisements you want to see the building feature not the advertisement being a part of the elevation now here again when we opened the uh, columns we found that uh, you know this is the condition of the concrete this uh, you know no foundation below the uh, columns so all that had to be you know these columns had to be encased and jacketed with the proper foundations and uh, you know to my mind i thought uh, that uh, it's, since it's not a heritage building we can uh, you know try and do uh, to my mind what i thought was a lord's pavilion all in white and that would uh, you know create a very good impact on the flats now this was how it was coming out and uh, then again i think for almost two years the work got uh, held up now i believe some new contractor has come in what they will do i don't know but uh, this is uh, how uh, things were shaping up and uh, this is where we had come to now see the absurdities which take place you would agree the moment you see this that if this roof was extended up till here it would look more proportional but because it does not exist the commissioner or rather the LDA would not give the permission to extend a similar sloping roof up till here so you know uh, great ideas marred by small minds so 
now we still have uh, insisted uh, although i do not know whether it will be done that we'll have a six feet uh, billboard on top of this so that we don't have these kind of things here okay now imagine we have done a beautiful railing but uh, amar ujala has the priority okay so what is it that we really want to show and uh, similarly if now here you can see the ashoka sema has disappeared now with a 5 feet uh, billboard over here a fair amount of this muck will be screened off and uh, if the ashoka sema was properly done over here then this you know with one two and the municipality building which is also being done uh, they would have formed a kind of a very good screen of heritage buildings the methodist church uh, again uh, repaired uh, and uh, brought to this uh, standard till the time we were there and then you have the catholic church again all restored uh, here are the insides being restored from here to here and uh, you know you have some very tremendous uh, uh, trust work in wood and uh, steel on the roof and uh, it's very elegant and uh, uh, fortunately these things will remain the way they are uh, the dsa dsb college uh, there is a part of the kumau university on the airpata hill so this is a portal building which has been a uh, chapel it's uh, the dsb chapel uh, they are saying bisht uh, this is dsb college chapel <coughs> which is now used as a museum so again the you know uh, repairs were carried out and here are the most uh, you know uh, the stand out feature of this building is uh, you can see the very elaborate and elegant uh, wooden truss work it's uh, a beauty hopefully these will be retained and now this is uh, the chamba town uh, chamba is a thousand year old town in uh, in himachal north himachal uh, just a minute yes we are calling it okay now uh, in this town you have the akhand chandi palace and you have uh, you know temples like the lakshmi narayan group vajreshwari and so on which are 1000 years old not the palace but of course those temples now we came up with a, a conservation plan for the entire town this was way back in 88 89 now here you can see the akhand chandi palace okay and these are the polo grounds in front but as you can see you would not uh, without any planning all kinds of you know buildings have come up and they they get, they have disconnected the palace from its foreground so a fair amount of uh, you know lack of uh, uh, imagination and uh, without any urban designers being involved uh, all kinds of things get done which uh, are to the detriment of the heritage uh, see these uh, the lakshmi narayan temple group and these are 1000 years old uh yeah, the point i want to make over here will just come subsequently but uh, the style of the temples is from the northern indian plains but on the shikhar this feature has been added a wooden feature which is basically to protect the stone work from the snow now here this is how things were when we went uh, in 88 89 but again you see here a very jarring blue color has been put on that on those wooden porches now this is the akhand chandi palace which is a mix of uh, mogal and uh, indian styles so these are the mehrab wale arches in some parts of the building has to be made in stages so the front part is of course a european kind of a facade so Uh, with this i want to draw a few conclusions the past is under pressure from the new there's no doubt the abstract values of heritage are not uh, you know uh, noted by the new 
the new things uh, in terms of aspirations, uh, the need to be modern, and the meaning of modern being Western. Okay, uh, we feel self assured. We don't feel self assured. We want to be assured if we are as good as the West or we are like them, right? So the now further what happens is that tourism in the hills is not there for traditional values. Who goes to Nainital or Masuri to see the library? Okay, or Ramsey Hospital or the Collectorate. Nobody goes there for the old buildings. People go to, uh, you know, it's more of leisure tourism, right? And these uh, traditional buildings or heritage buildings, they are not generating any revenue. So, uh, you know, if they were generating revenue, I'm sure they would, uh, for, uh, they would be uh, in the equation of the scheme of things, right? But at this moment, what happens is PWDs, uh, contractors, real estate people, owners, see, even as generations change, the old generation might be attached to the building, but uh, the new generation only looks upon it as how, what they can milk out of it. So lucrative opportunities are seen, and uh, the state government sees no value in heritage. I gave you the example of Doon railway station. Now, this is the Nainital Collectorate. Uh, it's a very crowded place. You have uh, the courts, you have the DM's office, other assorted offices. Now, we planned this uh, campus entirely way back in 2005 6. Uh, in 8 9, 2008 9, the building caught fire deliberately or otherwise, and it was completely burned down. Here you can see uh, these are the you know remaining burnt out timbers. Okay, I mean, in fact, uh, this photograph, mother, nobody knew what was the uh, old building like, and this is the only photograph extent of that building. And we said, uh, please let us restore it since we have already made all the plans and things that, uh, you know, it should be made in the old style. But the PWD would not let go. They wanted to and they did. It has become a concrete monster. Uh, whatever part they could uh, lay in concrete, concrete slabs, beams, cement plaster, not even lime plaster. So it's, uh, you know, this is how things work. The driving forces are very different. The respect for the old is not there. So what can be the way ahead? Are we going to, it seems to be a very bleak uh, future for uh, the past, at least in the hills and elsewhere in the country also. Just uh, yesterday I got the news that the Telangana High Court has cleared the demolition uh, of uh, a very major a heritage building just let me give you the name uh, just a sec yeah anyway uh, the Telangana High Court has uh, cleared the uh, demolition of a very major building uh, heritage building in order to put up a new secretariat okay so even at this point of time, even the judiciary is uh, enabling the government to have its way. And uh, so I've, uh, you know, I have made these suggestions, <clears throat> but I do not know how much weight they'll carry, uh, whether we can have tourism heritage circuits and uh, somehow link them with the revenue, uh, make adaptive use of heritage buildings. Uh, 